Welcome back to Metaphor Math, and we're on to 4D, 4D in our Intro to Analysis by Rosenwick series. And um, this is in the chapter one, uh, going over set theory. And in this problem, we're covering another uh, set equality here. And we want to prove this set equality. And to do that, we're going to do it similar to how we've done in previous problems. We're going to, we're going to show that the left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set. So A minus B cross C is a subset of A cross C minus B cross C, and vice versa. This is part one here, and then vice versa, we're going to show that A cross C minus B cross C is a subset of A minus B cross C, and this is part two here. And to do this, um, we're going to do the same that we've done before, same way that we've done before. We're going to just take any element in A minus B. We're going to take a general element, rather, in A minus B cross C. So let X be in A minus B cross C. And um, we'll, if we can show that this element that we gave the property of having A minus B cross C must also be in A cross C minus B cross C, then we've shown that all elements that have this property must be in this right-hand side set. And all elements that have this property are precisely all the elements in this left-hand side set here. So let's let's see if we can do that. So let x be in a minus b cross c. Well, since x is in a minus b cross c, x is in the cross product of two sets. So that implies that x is equal to some ordered pair u comma v, where u comma v is in a minus b cross c. And that implies that u is in a minus b and v is in c by the definition of a cross product of two sets. And I'm just going to talk about something real quick so that will help us with our proof later on, here and later on for part two. Um, and this is what does it mean, what does it mean for an x an element x, rather, an element x to not be in a cross product of two sets x cross y for any set x and y. Well, remember x is equal to some ordered pair a comma b. So there's three cases where this can hold. Either A is not in B, excuse me, not A is not in B, A is not in X, B is not in Y, or both 1 and 2, both 1 and 2. And we can kind of get a general sense of why this is true here. If we were to draw a picture of what this looks like, the cross product of two sets, in the case where the two sets are subsets of the real line, so let's say that X Let's say that x is a subset of the real numbers and y is a subset of the real numbers. Then x and y lie in the Cartesian plane. And let's say they're in this first quadrant here. Then that means that let's say x is this set here. x is here. So this is x. And then let's say that y is here. This, set, this subset of the real line y then that means, that means that this right here is the cross product x cross y. And we can kind of see x cross y. And we can kind of see why if, let's say a is not an x, then if a is not an x, then a is over here or way over here. And so a comma b, that ordered pair a comma b, cannot possibly be in, in this set here. And, and the same, the same kind of argument goes for if B is not in Y, and obviously if both A and B are not in X comma, or X cross Y, then a, the ordered pair A comma B can't possibly be in here. Um, but that kind of gives us some intuition of why this is true. So, back to our proof here. Back to our proof. We have that U, we have our element U is in A minus B, and V is in C. So if u is in a minus b by the definition of set difference, u is in an a and u is not in b, 
and we still have that v is in c. And if u is in a and u is not in b, then that means, what we, from what we just talked about up here, that u is not in b cross x for any set x, for any set x. Because if, oh, excuse me, not u, not just u, not just u, we have the u comma v, the ordered pair u comma v is not in b cross x. It doesn't matter where v is. u is not in b, so u comma v cannot possibly be in b cross x for any set x. Again, by what we just derived up here. So, this implies that u comma v is not in b cross c. And look at this, we're close, we're close. We just said that u comma v is not in b cross c, which is part of this side, but we just need to say that u, we need to derive that u comma v is in a cross c, but we've, well, we have that right here, u is in a and v is in c, so that implies u comma v is in a cross c, which implies u comma v is in a cross C intersect the complement of B cross C. And this is by the definition of, um, because both of these statements hold, there's an and here, U comma V is not in B cross C, and U comma V is in A cross C. So there's an and here. And this is by the definition of set complement, because if, if you're not in a set X, if A is not in a set X, then that implies, that's, this is an if and only statement, A is in the complement of X. And so if you go if u comma v is not is in is in a cross c intersect the complement of b cross c, then by the definition of set difference, u comma v is in a cross c minus minus b cross c. And we've done it. We've shown that this left hand side side set here is a subset of the right hand side set here by showing that this x that we said was in a minus b cross c must also be in the right hand side set a cross c minus b cross c. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. This is gonna be a very similar argument. So I'm gonna change colors here into this kind of light blue color. So let x, let x be in a cross c minus b cross c. Then that implies that x is equal to some ordered pair u v and u v, u v is in a cross C minus B cross C. And that means U comma B by the definition of set difference is in A cross C. And, and U comma V is not in B cross C. So, if if u, let me make myself some more room here. If u comma v is not, if u comma v is not in b cross c, if u comma v is not in b cross c, then that means one of three cases hold. Either u is not in b, v is not in c, or both one and two. u is not in b and v is not in c, both one and two. But we've already shown that u, since u v is in a cross c, then v must be in c. So two can hold, and since two can hold, three can hold because both one and two can hold. Since two can hold, so it must be that u is not in b. So we've just shown that u is not in b, and we also have that u is in a. So that means u is in a, and u is not in b which implies that u is in a intersect the complement of b by the definition of intersection and the complement. And let me make some, myself some more room here. And we're almost done here. Since u is in a the intersect the complement of b, then that means that u is in a minus b. And if u is in a minus b, then we already have that v is in C, because u comma v is in A cross C, so that means u is in A and v is in C. So 
so we have V is in C. So by the definition of an element being in the cross product of two sets, UV is in A minus B cross C. And we've done it. We've shown that this right-hand side set, we've shown that any general element in this right-hand side set here, this right-hand side head set, this right-hand side set here must be in this left-hand side set here, therefore showing that the right-hand side set A cross C minus B cross C is a subset of A minus B cross C. And we've shown both ways that they're subsets of each other, and we're done. We've shown the equality.